So tribal electricity is that electricity you get by rubbing things. Tribal is great for rubbing. It's also the electricity you get just by touching things. When you touch things and rub things, you transfer electrons and you create a potential difference and you create energy doing that. Now, it's the same kind of energy you get when you rub a balloon on your um, jumper and you can stick it to the wall or you stroke a cat too much and polystyrene will stick to the cat. All of those rubbing actions that you can get in different materials will create electricity. And that's astonishing if you think about it. That's the same kind of energy that we've been looking at when we've been looking at this raindrop generator. The raindrop generator doesn't only work because there's already a potential difference in a raindrop, or from the kinetic energy of it striking the actual surface, which is part of it, but also the rolling down and rubbing of the raindrop on the surface. All of this creates a charge that our little structure collects. And the amount of charge that it can collect, obviously, is astonishing. And that's the way it is with tribal electricity. Previously, the issue with it has been that um, it's not very much and it's hard to collect. But the amount of research gone on it is so vast that huge strides have actually been made. Now, when we made the raindrop generator, people were saying, yeah, well, it doesn't rain everywhere, so it's only useful in rainy countries. And that is very true. And the question is, what about wind? Can we do it with wind? Well, the answer is yes. If we can arrange something to rub, then it will create electricity in the wind because the wind is doing the action of rubbing. There's two ways of doing this, obviously. One is to make the whole thing flutter, and as it flutters, it rubs together. And the other is to have two rotating surfaces that rub against each other. And both of those ways have been explored. Perhaps the fluttering way, actually, is one of the most simple. It was, um, there was a brilliant project done by a group of Canadians called the FLAG Project, which I think stands for uh, Flexible Linear Aerostatic Generator. It was basically three layers of plastic strung together, rubbing the wind, attached to this circuit, and the circuit, as you can see, contains a um, variable capacitor in the centre, which is three layers of plastic, then there's a rectification circuit, and then there's a load, and what the Canadians did was attach this to fluorescent light, take it outside and hold it up, and they could light the light with this tiny little generator. That in itself is hugely impressive, but of course, the wind bar is one of those things that just vibrates in the wind. And if you know the wind bar, it's a um, piece of material with two springs and a bit of electromagnetic induction going on. The bar vibrates, so you can have a string where the string vibrates when you're thinking about things like an ollie and a harp. Or you can have a band and you have the wind belt where the band vibrates. But that vibration of a band in the wind is a well-known phenomenon. If we do that with two different materials, like uh, PTFE and Kapton, we generate a very high amount of charge and current. And of course, that has been done. And there's lots of these flexible TENG generators kicking around and demonstrating on the net, and vibrating in the wind, and generating enough, light, enough power to light a billion LEDs. <laughs> I'm joking, it's a couple of hundred LEDs. So that vibration in the wind can be accessed really easily and it can be accessed at very low wind speeds indeed. But of course you can have it on two rotating discs and simple rotating devices have also been come up with where because there is no um, electromagnetic component the amount of friction is exceedingly low and so the wind speeds at which this can work are also exceedingly low. We have two discs of electrodes arranged with a small gap and they spin in the wind with the uh, little bits of plastic rubbing on each other bit of rectification in the way of that circuit I showed you for the flag generator and sure enough we can create a whole lot of energy that does some useful work. And you've got to remember that these things are uh, lab based at the moment, there's no production side to this and so they use some relatively esoteric materials and you can get some complicated structures going on where the power produced actually is significant based on the complicated structure of the esoteric material being used. Now, does that make it out of our reach? Well, I think not. I think our challenge, like we did with the raindrop generator, is to translate those academic papers into everyday materials. And sure enough, we're not going to get the kind of performance that you get. You're going to get an acceptable level of performance that we give up because we're using exceedingly simple methods and exceedingly simple materials to create our generators. But we have the advantage of scale. A lot of these things are uh, a few centimetres across. We can build metres across and still have that power output and still get considerable power from those. 
Now I think this moves us away from the traditional style of wind turbine when you think about the VAWT and HAWT which is basically a great big mechanism stuck on some gears on a motor with all its expense and difficulty and uh, problems of maintenance to things that come down to um, printing on plastic. I mean we've put a layer of aluminium on some plastic, painted on some ink, painted on some um, varnish and created ourselves a generator. That's only a very small step from being able to print these things. Silkscreen printing would do exactly the same thing. So the ability to create large scale using simple materials is suddenly within our reach courtesy of the research that's been going on. So it's well worth having a look on Google Scholar. Now Google Scholar is really simple to get to. You go into a Google mainstream, a main screen, type Google Scholar, you'll come to a special section of Google which only has academic papers. If you type TENG, which stands for um, Triboelectric Nano Generator, wind, you'll come up with some of the most astounding things that people have been up to based on those two models I was talking about, either rotating or flapping. And you'll see that they've been up to all kinds of things. Now, sure enough, some of those papers are behind paywalls, but quite a lot of them are actually open access. You can just click on them and read them, because this is an area of huge interest to everybody for very obvious reasons. Now, I don't think it's going to overtake traditional wind generation in the next five years, nor do I think it will always overtake it, because there is not one size of shoe to fit all people. We need different shoes because people have different feet. We live in different situations. I'm in England where it rains a considerable amount of time. Maybe I was in Oregon or the South Island of New Zealand or in the Amazon. We get a huge amount of rainfall, and so a raindrop generator is particularly interesting. Some people live in high wind conditions where a traditional wind turbine works brilliantly. Some people live in low wind conditions where you need to harvest small amounts of wind. So there's just this huge range of conditions in which we live that different solutions are going to be appropriate. And exploring those different solutions is how I think we're going to solve our energy crisis. It's by exploration of these new ideas, by working together, by trying things out, that we're actually going to get an answer. I don't think there is one answer for everybody that's going to suit across the entire world and all the living conditions in which we live in. But I was asked if this tribal electric generation scheme that we're using for um, raindrops could be translated easily into wind. And the answer is yes. And it offers a new opportunity, a new direction for wind that um, really has only just begun to be explored in the last five or ten years. There aren't any, um, as far as I'm aware, commercial applications of this out there. But all that means to me is it's an opportunity for us to develop our own applications and maybe make commercial applications out of it. Anyway, I hope the video was of interest. I hope it inspires you to look at that thing, but it is a little bit of a rabbit hole, as somebody actually mentioned on one of the comments. Once you start getting into this, then there is a lot behind it, and it can be um, hmm, a little daunting. I think what you need to do when you're looking at that is choose your direction. We've chosen for the while while we're working on raindrops to work on raindrops. But we could equally use, choose to work on rain, in which case we might change, make a choice between the rotation and the flapping. If you think there's a best option, there isn't. Just one of those options will most suit you for your circumstances, and that's the one you should explore. There is never any such thing as the best and most perfect. There's just things that will do a job within the limits of what you want them to do and the suitable to the situation in which you're in. And I mean how you live, how much money you've got, how much time you've got. So all of those situations. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it does inspire you to have a look at this TENG generation as a viable alternative to wind generation and as a thing to explore. Oh. Just to add, the way of gathering this stuff is to stick it in a capacitor and use that capacitor to charge a battery bank. Anyway, I hope the video is of interest, I hope it was useful, thank you very much for watching and please remember to like and subscribe.